Supercharged slots are a new addition to No Man's Sky. They increase the power of pretty much any technology you put into them. Your exosuit, ships, multi-tools, exocraft and freighter all now have them, though in varying quantities and locations. As for how many you'll have is class dependent for the most part. C-class multi-tools, ships and freighters will have a single supercharged slot, whereas B-class will have two, A-class three and S-class four. Your exosuit and exocrafts are a little different to this, as they are not really classed. They will all have three supercharged slots and their locations are static. You cannot change the locations and they are the same for everyone. For the rest there is a fair bit of consistency in supercharged slot location, which is both good and bad. It's good in the sense that players can share locations and know where the supercharged slots will be in the inventory. The bad part is that that means for the most part you cannot get a better layout if you really like a particular ship model. Ships are nice and simple, their supercharged slot locations are 100% static, even in crashed ships, meaning that any particular model of ship will always have their supercharged slots in the same places. But note that this is on a per ship model basis. Whether you obtain the ship from the station, a trading post, a freighter or a crash site, that particular model will always have them in the same place. This is also the case over the classes, except only S class will have all of them. So if you see a slot on a C class, that is one of the slots you'll see on all the other classes for that model. It's worth noting at this point also that whether you can see the supercharged slot when purchasing doesn't change that it is there. If you can't see one or all of the supercharged slots, you just need to expand the inventory to uncover them. Multi-tools are quite different however. The locations of a multi-tool slot are defined by the cabinet you find it in. The consistency here is that everyone will see the same slot locations of the same cabinet regardless of what multi-tool is appearing in it at that time. This can also be used to see more of the slots in the circumstance of a pistol with small inventory showing less than 4 when an S-Class. If you reload a different tool into the cabinet that is a rival of some kind, and so has more overall slots, you can potentially see where the previously covered supercharged slots will be. Another use of this consistency in layout is that if the S-Class cabinet you find for the multi-tool does not have a satisfactory layout, i.e. where the supercharged slots are not close together or spread as evenly as you wish, you can search for a second S-Class cabinet or more within the system to potentially find a better layout. Freighters are like ships, their supercharged slot locations are defined by the ship's seed, then the class of the freighter will define how many of those slots are usable. I did experience an interesting thing when testing the freighters, over many tests, enough to spawn three S-Classes, I noticed a single A-class spawn had the two visible slots shifted slightly to the left by one slot compared to all others I'd spawned. I initially assumed that maybe freighters were random, but they are certainly not. I theorised that the random layout it appeared with did not include the first column of slots. This caused the slots to default to the left, making the second column visibly the first. I did not have the required info to know whether I should test this further at the time, so I didn't buy the freighter and then attempt to upgrade so I can't say for sure whether this would lead to a permanent shifting of the supercharged slots or whether they would shift to the correct locations upon upgrading, but I'm confident in the locations being overall static to seed. At the very base of it all, a supercharged slot will apply a 25% buff to the technology's stat. However, how that 25% is applied makes a huge difference based on the stat type, making some modules far far greater in their potential through supercharged slots than others. The legitimacy of the 25% bonus is definite, there is a single value for special tech slot bonus in the gameplay globals file that is a 1.25 modifier. Starting with the easiest to see we have additive. Additive stats are things like light year range. This is the best example to use as anyone can see its influence on their ship's light year range when fiddling about with tech. For supercharged slots it is also in plain numbers whether supercharged or not and you can see that the supercharged slot will simply add an extra 25% of the light year range on the technology module in question, so it's super simple. Where it gets a little confusing are when there are stats that are additive but appear as percentages, such as damage. Damage stats on pretty much all but the voltaic amplifier and ship or multi-tool bonuses are additive, I'm talking about the 3% that pulse bitter upgrade of yours is giving you. It's not taking the base damage and multiplying that by 1.03, it's simply adding 3 damage to each bullet. So when you supercharge it, it is only applying an extra 0.75 damage to each bullet. This means that when attempting to increase damage on any weapon that has a bonus below 100% on its upgrades, you should focus the main module, as this stat holds the base damage and when supercharged will apply that 25% to that. 
The next stat is multiplicative, and this is where it gets very cool. For multiplicative stats, the bonus on a module is a percentage modifier that is multiplied with the base stat. For example, rate of fire. We'll just assume this is at the base of 6, and the upgrade's fire rate bonus is 1.2, which would show in-game as 20%. The base stat of 6 is multiplied by the bonus of 1.2, resulting in 7.2. When a multiplicative stat is supercharged, it multiplies the bonus by 1.25, in the example, this was 1.2. This now becomes 1.5, resulting in a fire rate of 9. Where this gets really cool is how multiplicative stats calculate as a whole, as they compound. Where just a single module of 20% increases the fire rate in the example by 1.2, and a supercharged module increases it by 3, if you add a further module to that that isn't supercharged, it doesn't just add another 1.2, it adds 1.8, as the calculation there is 6 multiplied by 1.5 multiplied by 1.2. For multiplicative stats, they grow in power the more you have. This also includes adjacency bonuses, as those bonuses of 3% to 16% are just whacked on the end of the calculation. This makes multiplicative stats the strongest. And this strength isn't just in their compounding, but also their utility, as it doesn't matter which bonus you charge. It's all in the same chain, allowing you to focus on the module with the highest additive stat, provided the multiplicative stats at least exist on that module. This is the same for adjacency. Lastly of the stat types are reductive stats. These are stats that act like multiplicative, except the bonus is reducing the base stat. For example, a base stat of 1.2 is multiplied by a bonus stat of 0.8, for a result of 0.96. These are calculated in the same way as multiplicative, with the base stat being multiplied by the bonus. The difference is how the 1.25 modifier is applied. Instead of multiplying the reductive stat by 1.25, you divide it by 1.25, which leads to some confusing outcomes when you are trying to figure out what is going on with these. Say you have a pulse drive fuel efficiency stat of 20%. This is actually a reductive stat of 0.8. When charged, this stat changes from 20% to 36%. This is because 0.8 divided by 1.25 is 0.64. That 0.64 is then multiplied with the base stat to reduce your fuel consumption per tick by 36%. While multiplicative stats increase with every bonus, reductive stats decrease. To take all of this and apply it to your layouts, I'll briefly cover the most beneficial technology to use this on for the various inventories. Starting with Exosuit, one of the most useful will be your Jetpack S or X class upgrades, with the four specific stats you want to increase. The main Jetpack module only has four of the six stats an S class movement upgrade has access to. These are Jetpack tanks, fuel efficiency, initial boost power, and recharge rate. These do not affect sprint. In my opinion, initial boost power and fuel efficiency are the least useful of the six stats you can obtain on an S class movement module. The Neural Stimulator Blueprint upgrade has both Sprint Distance and Sprint Recovery, but only one other stat, so where possible placing an S or X class upgrade that has Jetpack Tanks, Recharge Rate, Sprint Distance and Sprint Recovery on will be by far the greatest choice. It's important to know here that it doesn't matter what the individual module stat value is, it just has to have the value itself, as all of these stats are multiplicative or reductive, not additive. Next are the Exosuit Sentinel upgrades, as these can have many different stats on. It is once again most important to pick the stats you want to boost rather than the power of the bonus on an individual module. Sentinel Exosuit upgrades can have up to four of the following stats active. Shield Strength, Core Health, Life Support Tanks, Solar Panel Power, Fuel Efficiency and Sprint Distance. Core Health is capped. It is possible to achieve the cap even without the extra three modules we used to have using these modules so it is not an important thing to boost. So when choosing which Sentinel module to boost, if one doesn't have core health, then that is the one to go for. Generally, I would advise in priority of utility to boost shield strength, then sprint distance, life support tanks, fuel efficiency, solar panel power, and then core health. Next in line to boost would be standard shielding units. You could also argue X-Class has a protection as equal value. Boosting shield units will only really benefit the shield stat, at least in endgame as the core health, as I've mentioned, has a cap. X-Class has a protection module, regardless of their stat values, will be boosted dramatically, and this stat will increase the time you can exist safely within those four environments without having to recharge and so forth. Essentia like has a protection battery on the shield lattice. These are already more than enough technology to utilize your supercharged slots. You only have three after all.
Moving on to ships, weapons are nice and easy. You only need to worry about the damage stat as far as which module to choose, and the main module has a primary stat, but also the main weapon module will also always have every stat attached to it. The multiplicative and reductive stats will gain the same bonus regardless of the module you choose, so always prioritise the main module. An interesting module is the Fragment Supercharger, a blueprint upgrade for the Positron Ejector ship weapon. This increases accuracy and range. Accuracy is a reductive stat, range is a multiplicative, and with such a short range space shotgun style weapon, this can lead to way more of your bullets actually hitting the enemy, so this is a very good choice to boost. Shields are easy and a bit disappointing for boosting, they are important but only have a single stat, it is also additive from everything I can see, so the main module is the one to go for, it's just an economical choice. Hyperdrive are very easy, you just pick the upgrade that has the highest light year range to boost, job done. Pulse Engine is the highest utility and most economical technology to boost in ships. And the first choice I would recommend is the Sublight Amplifier, as this is the only module that has a boost to pulse drive power, which increases the speed at which you pulse. However, I've not yet had chance to test whether the pulse drive power stat on the Pulse Engine module can be boosted. If it can, it is by far the best module to boost on a ship. Note that the main Pulse Engine module does not gain adjacency bonuses from the others and can only give a small bonus itself, so still where possible use all other Pulse Engine blueprints and upgrades to touch the sublight amplifier and all sides to heavily boost the pulse drive power, saving you a lot of time in your play. Next we have freighters, these are nice and simple. If you want to boost your hyperdrive, you'll want to focus primarily on the highest value technology for hyperdrive range. The highest value for freighter hyperdrive is the 800 light years given by the Reality D threader. You should also focus on touching all four sides with any other module than the core freighter hyperdrive module. The core module is the only lesser module in these as far as the bonus it gives. After that there's the plasmatic warp injector which gives 300 light years, both of these are blueprint modules, after those it would be your best S-class upgrade which can have up to 250. Due to the power of supercharged slots and the amount of hyperdrive modules that exist for freighters, it would be beneficial to have two separate blocks if you have no adjacent supercharged slots, centering on both of those two blueprint modules. Next best thing, or the best if you don't care about light year range, are the beacon upgrades which boost fleet expedition speed. Supercharging these is seriously powerful, and I would even recommend just splitting them up and whacking one on each supercharged slot for a huge boost to the speed that you can complete them. However, this will not be useful if you can only get online once per day, for a short session at most, in which case you should consider fuel upgrades. Which you choose to boost on freighter is more than ever down to your playstyle. Lastly, we have multi-tools, as I won't be covering exocrafts in this one. I have far too much research left to perform on those. You should decide what you want to boost here, whether it is weapons, mining or scanning. For weapons, focus the main module first, then move on to the upgrades similar to ships. The main module will have all of the stats of the weapon, so economy of stat boosting is maximised beyond anything else. You also get that larger bonus to the additive damage stat. After this you should prioritise boosting the modules that have the specific stats you want on them. So S-Class upgrades with 4 stats as a base. Damage is boosted the least due to it being additive and most damage bonuses from modules being minor, not counting grenade upgrades which greatly increase damage. Adjacent supercharged slots can be so powerful, and Ostentatious has found a truly amazing multi-tool here. You can find it at the coordinates on screen now, just head to the system via the portal address on screen, it's in Euclid so nice and easy, no need to reload. Just ensure you turn off multiplayer before going as this is going to be a crazy popular rifle. So there will be a lot of people going and if you have MP on, they'll likely get to it before you. If a troll has blocked the settlement, just report the base to remove it for you. I'll link Ostentatious original video in the description, so if you do pick it up, be sure to pop by, give him some watch time, and drop a thanks. If you are not already using it, I would also highly recommend the Voltaic Amplifier. Supercharging this is huge, it will increase the bonus to damage when stunned by 30% extra, making short work of larger enemies. For mining, I'd hugely recommend first focusing on supercharging the optical drill for massive increases to resources mined, then the primary mining beam module followed by the upgrades which you should prioritise by having all four stats present. Scanning is a slightly interesting one. You'll get best results purely from the upgrades, neither the analysis visor or the scanner will give you anything of worth. The scanner will act like an additive stat and just increase the base value per scan by 25%. This is not applied to the overall calculation, so scanning a mineral would simply result in 50 extra units. 
The upgrades are all boosted by 25%, which is pretty substantial. It is also worth splitting them up for this if you are focusing on Scanner. This was a super long guide, but it's good to get some proper in-depth guides on the go again. If you made it this far, be sure to hit the like button and let me know your thoughts below. What are you prioritizing in your technology now for supercharging? Thank you for watching and have an amazing day, folks. Thank you.